I'm Elian St. Hilaire, and in this video, we're going to talk about Mesh Central Satellite, an advanced configuration of Intel AMT with 802.1X. Mesh Central allows you to configure and activate Intel AMT, but it also allows you to configure AMT with 802.1x for network access. And in this video, we're going to follow up on the basic video that we had last time with a more advanced situation where we're going to configure uh, Intel AMT in domain controllers uh, where you have more advanced radius servers. So let's take a look at that. And the first thing I'm going to do is show uh, slides. So I'm going to go right here to my slide deck and we're going to start by showing what we are going to do today. So quick review, 802.1x is a network protocol for um, access to, for network access. So the device normally has to authenticate to the, to a, the switch. Uh, it actually authenticates to a radius server through the switch. And once the radius server says OK, the switch unlocks and then the device has access to the network. So that's the usual thing. Now, this would not normally involve Mesh Central, except that Intel AMT is like a separate a computer inside a computer. It's its own uh, network stack and so on. And so when uh, the computer is sleeping and AMT is enabled uh, and awake, then AMT, in order to be managed, needs to have network access and therefore it needs to authenticate to the radius server with 802.1x. So Mesh Central uh, needs to configure AMT in such a way that AMT can configure and ac uh, can access the network. And so last time we used a simple radius server, but this time we are going to use a Windows domain um, radius server. So it's of course connected to a domain controller, it's connected to a certificate authority, and so it's this is a much more um, realistic corporate radius server. And so we're going to have to configure AMT to work in this environment, which is much more realistic. And so what we are going to do is use this new tool called Mesh Central Satellite. It's a Windows tool that runs on a computer that is on the same domain as the uh, radius server, the, of course, the domain controller and the certificate authority. So it's a Windows application, sits on the domain usually on-prem, and then it will connect out to the Mesh Central server and act as a go-between so that Mesh Central server can configure uh, your domain controller with new AMT accounts and also can ask the certificate authority of your domain to issue certificates for the AMT devices. So that's what we're going to do today. So what we're going to have is uh, if we're going to have my trusty Mesh Central server, uh, as usual. We're going to have a virtual machine that is running on Windows, is running the satellite. And then we're going to have three other virtual machines, one for the radius server, one for the certificate authority, and one for the domain controller. And so we're going to have a total of four uh, basically servers on the back end. And then uh, when an AMT machine with an agent connects to Mesh Central, Mesh Central will uh, configure that device to, um, to talk to the radius server. But we're also going to issue a certificate and we're going to configure the domain controller with a new computer account for that AMT device. So last time we had a very simple situation where we used the same username and password uh, and we used just username and password, uh, not, no certificates. And we used the same username and password on all the AMT machines to communicate with uh, the radius server. So that's not realistic because then you end up having everybody using uh, all the AMT devices having this, using the same account. This is no good. So from a security point of view, it's really not, not good. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to do, go to domain controller. We are going to create a different... Um, user uh, device uh, entry for each AMT device. We're going to have a radius group that's going, we're going to include all the devices in, and then we're going to configure our radius server to, um, to get grant permissions to those devices. 
Um, and of course, we're going to have the certificate authority because we're also going to use certificates. So let's get started on that. So first of all, uh, I'm going to start by my trusty server here. So this is my um, my mesh central server, of course. And we're going to specially target AMT15 here, this machine uh, that has both a wired and wireless interface. And we want to configure both with um, with uh, 802.1x. Okay, next thing I want to do is talk a little bit about the configuration of Mesh Central. So in my configuration of Mesh Central in the domain section, I have a section called AMT Manager. And here, so in the last video, the simple configuration, what we did is we had, uh, we used a we set up an 802.1x profile with uh, MS Chap, which is just username and password. We put a username and password. And then um, we had wireless profiles. One wireless profile used 802.1x, and so it would use this profile here. And, uh, and then we, we have a Wi-Fi profile that did not use 802.1x, just PSK. In that case, we provide the password, and this is kind of unrelated. But this would be set up on the wired interface of AMT, and this would be one of the Wi-Fi profiles that AMT would have. And it would use the same 1x profile as the wired interface. So this, this is how it's set up. So this was the old uh, simple video. Now, the new one, uh, we're going to change the configuration a little bit. So there's uh, one option here is to use the same MS chap, so the same username password. But this time, we are going to, instead of sp specifying what the username and password is, uh, which is not good for security, what we're going to do is we're going to tell this application called Mesh Central Satellite, we're going to basically use it as a proxy to go configure the domain controller. And we're going to tell, uh, in this configuration, the user and min so will be configured, the, let's see, Mesh Central Satellite will be connecting to Mesh Central using the admin account. But normally you would create a, like a satellite account or something and you would uh, have Mesh Central Satellite connect to that account and then you would put that account name here. So basically that says whenever you set up a AMT machine, put uh, 802.1x as wired, put uh, this Wi-Fi profile with this 1x and use the same here and then because this is a uh, username password, go and query the Mesh Central satellite that is logged in under the admin account uh, for uh, you know, the, the root certificate and for the username and password and go set that up in the domain controller. So that's, that's one example. And then the example I currently have set up on my server right here is this one. I'm gonna use EAPTLS, which is a very strong um, setup using certificates. And what we're going to do is same thing here, 802.1x, set up using certificates, and go ahead and query the Mesh Central satellite application that is connected under the admin account, and go set all that up. Okay, so that's, that's my configuration. So I currently have this configuration set up on my server right now. But, um, but if, if you don't want to deal with a certificate authority, you, uh, you have a radius server, but you just want user and password, you have the option of just using MS Chap and, um, and getting user and passwords uh, configured with all the machines. The benefit of using uh, this TLS is that because it is certificate, uh, you know, it's certificate authenticated between the, the AMT and the server, the certificates are issued without the private key ever leaving AMT. So we basically are going to tell AMT, generate a uh, key pair. We're going to then create a certificate, have the AMT sign that, that's uh, the certificate request, and then the CA is going to sign the certificate request and we'll issue it inside AMT. So basically, you... you uh, the, the nice thing about certificate versus password is password, you kind of have the domain controller, you know, Mesh Central 
satellite, generate a password, set it up in the domain, set it up in AMT, but it could be intercepted, where here, the, the certificate is created inside AMT and, um, and with the private key you know, never leaving AMT itself. So this is like a, the top level of security. Okay, now, now that I have that out of the way, we have this configuration currently set up. Let's take a look at um, my other computers. So I have another, I have two desktops here. I have my normal AMT on the upper uh, left, and I have a, a big server on the bottom right here. So I'm gonna go on that big server, and it's right next to me. And this, this is basically um, a Hyper-V server, and it's running multiple uh, virtual machines. So I have a domain controller certificate authority, my domain controller itself, the RADIUS server, and then this, uh, what I call satellites, which is just a, a virtual machine running mesh central satellite. And so we'll take a look at that. Now, uh, for people watching this video, obviously I presume you've already set up um, a CA before, you've set up a domain controller, you've set up a radio server. So you have that all done already. And so what you wanna do is add mesh central and, um, and uh, the ability to set up uh, 802.1x with your domain. So let's go and take a look at uh, satellite first. So I'm going to double click on this and take a look at Mesh Central Satellite. So it's this application right here. Actually, what I'm going to do is close it and just run it again. So just so you, you know. So it's a Windows app. It's built in C Sharp. And the, this app uh, can be run as a background service or as a standalone app. So I'm gonna run it as a standalone app here, but just note that once you get it working and everything's fine, you can click the, the service thing here. You can say file and you can uh, locally connect or disconnect. So I'm gonna locally disconnect. And then what you can, from Mesh Central, but you can install and start this as a background service. And then once it runs as a background service, uh, you still get all the messages from the background service displayed on this app. So you can still monitor what's going on with the service, but you don't have to run this app anymore once it runs as a background service. Now, I'm not gonna run as a service. I'm gonna run it locally. So I have a local connect and disconnect. This just tells the local app, go ahead and connect to Mesh Central. But you know, typically before you do this, you would go into settings and this is the setting panel that has all the magic. So, so in, um, what you need to do is tell uh, Mesh Central Satellite how to connect to your Mesh Central server. So this would be the, the Mesh Central server uh, you, you know, DNS name. In this case, I'm using a private IP address because my Mesh Central server is on a, a private uh, network to Mesh Central, and then you have your login username and password to log into Mesh Central. Now, uh, here, two factor authentication is not supported. So, you can't, like, obviously, you can't have a, a computer uh, do 2FA to another computer. Uh, you know, that doesn't work. But um, what you could do here, and let's see, I'll try to, um, I'll go back to my um, mesh Central for a second. When you are on your Mesh Central server, you can go into my account, create login token, and you can, t uh, for example, satellite, uh, no, no time unlimited, and this will create a username and password uh, that you can cut and paste into Mesh Central Satellite. And so the nice thing about this is now you have kind of uh, computer to computer credentials and uh, and once you're done here, you, you can have Satellite log in to your account using these credentials. And at any time, you can you know, kick Satellite out by just deleting the credentials. So that's a good option if you want to, um, to have Mesh Central Satellite connect to your account, but you don't want to give them, you don't want to give your account, your Mesh Central Satellite, your username and password. So if that makes sense. So I'm going to go back to Mesh Central Satellite here. So I have the username and password. The device name, this is the, uh, this is the name that will be used to configure the domain controller uh, for each device account. 
So in the domain controller, and actually, maybe I can show it here. I'm gonna switch back and I'm gonna to go to my domain controller. And here I have the Active Directory users and computers, and you can see there's already two computer accounts. And so this, all the AMT machines start with I, M, E, dash, and then the, the computer name. Now, if you select OS name as the computer name, then the, the account for the device will, st will have the, the operating system name like OAMT um, machine 12 or so on that, that will be used. Now, if you can also select node ID, in that case, the beginning of the node ID will be used as the, as the name. So you'll have IME dash, like some garble. And the garble is actually the node ID right here. So, um, so in that case, if you select the other option, you will have IME garble, and then the description will have the AMT version dash, and you'll have the, um, the, the friendly name here. The, um, using the node ID is more secure uh, because it cannot be tampered with, but on the other hand, uh, it's kind of less friendly on the, on the domain controller when you're looking at devices and their names are kind of garbled. So, um, but I did want to mention that. So that's a, kind of an extra security uh, uh, feature here of Mesh Central, is that you can select, instead of device name, you can select the node identifier. Now I'm gonna leave it to operating system device name, so it, it just looks friendly for demo purposes. Okay, uh, skip TLS check. This, this is, if you have a private Mesh Central server that doesn't have uh, you know, a trusted certificate, then you can check that off so that Mesh Central satellite can still connect to your server, um, even if you have a, a you know, a, a untrusted certificate. Security groups, these um, are, it's going to display all the, the security groups of your domain controller that have been created inside the computers group. So, uh, oops, that's my CA. I'm gonna go back to domain controller. Let's see right here. So here you notice that under computers of my domain, I have a uh, security group called uh, radius group. And so if you, I can create multiple groups here, but what I wanna do is have Mesh Central Satellite every time it creates a computer account, I want it to have it join this group. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and select, check that box right here. And by checking this, when the computer is created, on the computer entry for AMT is created, it will auto join the groups here that are selected. And I only have one, so I picked that one. Okay, um, now optionally you can do certificate authority. If uh, you don't have to, if you're gonna do username and password only, in that case, uh, you, you just leave this blank here. Uh, this field blank, but if you do want to set up a certificate authority, you put the computer name dash the CA name, and then once you've typed this, you click the checkbox here. It will show you the list of certificate templates, so you can pick the one you want. You can create a certificate template specifically for AMT if you like, and so that's great. And then you can configure how you want to issue the certificate. Um, I'm going to use the common name of the certificate as the SAM account name, and then you can select the alternative name. The important one is the user principal name. This has to be in the alternative. That's the one that's, that the radius server will really look at. And then you have logging here. Okay, so usually you, you, keep, uh, you keep all these enabled. You keep um, this, uh, the, you, you select SAM uh, account name as the common authority, uh, as the certificate com common name, templates, certificate authority, and your login, and you're done. Okay, so once you do that, I'm gonna cancel, of course, because I didn't change anything. Well, I can hit local connect, and I'm now connected on the Mesh Central server. So as soon as Mesh Central satellite is connected to Mesh Central server, it will wait for the server to uh, make requests and uh, if it makes requests to add or revoke, uh, add computers, remove computers, um, create, issue a certificate, uh, or revoke a certificate, well, all these things will, will uh, Mesh Central Satellite will 
process them. Now note that all the configuration that you've done here is saved in a config.txt file. It's just a key value pair a small text file, and it's in the same folder as Mesh Central Satellite. So, you know, once you got this all configured, you can run it as a background service. The service will load the same config file, and you're off and, and going. So, I'm connected now. Um, now, how do I know that I that Mesh Central really recognizes my um, my satellite server? I have a. I'm going to go back to my Mesh Central server right here. I'm going to go to my server tab console. And uh, if you type user sessions, enter, this is all the currently active sessions that Mesh Central has to any, any user. And you'll see that I have two. I have one, which is the session right here. Um, and then the other one coming from this IP address is the satellite one. So this is a, a session that's special because it's a, a satellite session that can receive um, these domain uh, commands. Okay, great. So I have uh, everything set up. I have my server set up. I have my uh, mesh central config.json. I have my satellite set up. Satellite is connected. And so let's take a look at how this actually works in practice. So uh, I'm going to go to my MT15 machine. And what I'm going to do, normally what happens is the, as soon as the agent connects, um, the agent, you know, Mesh Central will recognize that device and will uh, change the policy according to your config. Now, what you would do is you would have to go inside the device group and Intel AMT here, you have, if you select no policy or deactivate, obviously the server will do nothing. But if you select CCM, ACM, or full automatic, any of these, then Mesh Central will uh, apply these policy, do the activation if needed, and then, um, and then set up your 802.1x and your Wi-Fi profiles. So right now I'm in ACM mode for this device group. This computer is inside the device group. Um, and so it's already configured actually. So if I click on the AMT tab and connect, uh, we will see under network settings, we'll see that 802.1x is already enabled in a TLS mode. And on the wireless profiles, we see that there's one wireless profile. In this case, um, uh, yeah, and it's EAP TLS. Now, I, I did, uh, in my notes, I put the, the wrong um, uh, SSID here. This is the actual SSID I'm using. So this is EAP TLS and TLS, good. And so what I'm going to do for the purpose of this demonstration is I'm going to remove this profile and I'm going to select A2.1x and disable it. So I'm going to reset this. And then on the security settings, you'll notice that there's a certificate here. This is the A2.1x certificate that was issued to that machine uh, for the purpose of authenticating to Radius. I'm going to go delete that. And then th this one is the root certificate for my domain controller CA. I am going to delete that. OK, so now AMT is completely set, is free of, of A2.1x. I'm going to go in the console here, and this is just now. I could disconnect the agent as soon as it reconnects. The server will reconfigure everything correctly. Or what I can do is type the command amt config, and this is going to force Mesh Central to look at the configuration of AMT, see if there's anything that's wrong, and fix it. So this is done every time the agent is connected, but I'm just going to force to do it now. And the nice thing about typing AMT config is that it enables the, the visual uh, viewing here so you can see exactly what happened. So Mesh Central connected to AMT using TLS. It looked at the Wi-Fi profiles and noting that, noticed that one of them is missing. So it plans on adding one and removing none. It then requested 802.1x credentials for AEP TLS from Mesh Central Satellite. And Mesh Central Satellite then came back and says, please generate a key pair. The, the key pair was generated in AMT, sent to Mesh Central Satellite. Then Mesh Central Satellite said, OK, here's, I got the certificate request ready. I need AMT to sign it. So, so the request came back 
uh, Mesh Central told AMT to assign the request. The certificate request was then sent back to the satellite. The satellite had the CA sign it, and then it came back, and then the uh, root certificate and the client certificate uh, were added. So the root certificate, this is the CA root, and then the, this the client certificate is the one that was generated uh, here and signed by the CA. That's the one that was now added. Then it sets up the wired profile right here, and uh, also the wireless profile. It's not mentioned, but that's, that's what happened there. And so, and it was done. So now it only does that if it needs to. Um, obviously, if, if I go and type AMT config again, the profile's already set up, so Mesh Central will notice there's nothing to do, and it will say done, right? So normally, uh, the agent connects, uh, Mesh Central will just check that everything's okay, check that the clock is in sync for AMT and so on. And if everything's fine, then no problem. But if anything is wrong, like I removed all the, the profiles and everything manually, then it will go and reconfigure that. So I can go back to my AMT tab, hit refresh on the network settings, and you'll see it one x is back to uh, AEPTLS, and I can click on it and I can see my username. This is the... Um, the username that was, uh, you know, set up in the domain controller. I can see my domain is correct. And then at the bottom here, I have Wi-Fi profiles and I have the, uh, the Wi-Fi profile with the domain and username. Also, if I go back to security settings and hit refresh, then you'll see that I have my trusted root for my domain uh, CA, and I have my private key here for the client certificate. Okay, now while this happened, we can take a look at what went on on the, uh, on the satellite side. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna switch the satellite, and this is what happened here. So you can see it says connected, so this is when Mesh Central connected, uh, Mesh Central satellite connected. And then you can see at, at this clock, this is, uh, you know, five minutes later, we can see a bunch of things. So there was an 802.1x AEPTLS request that was made from Mesh Central. We requested a key pair. We requested that the certificate um, signing request be signed by AMT. Then it says reset computer here. Uh, what happened is that the, the domain controller profile for that AMT machine was already there. Um, now I could have deleted it and it would have recreated it. But here the, the AMT machine uh, profile was reset and then the, the response was sent with the certificate, the root and everything. And that's ca that caused uh, Mesh Central to complete the uh, setup. So, you know, basically in this screen right here, we have on the top what Mesh Central saw and how it configured AMT. And on the bottom right, we have what Mesh uh, Central Satellite did to configure the domain controller. So quite uh, fun stuff. Now notice that the, on the upper right, Mesh Central could have run on a Linux computer. The Mesh Central does not have to run on the domain itself. So you can run an AWS instance or you know, a Azure instance, instance of Mesh Central in the cloud on a Linux Docker you know, container. That's perfectly fine. But on the bottom right, Mesh Central uh, satellite has to be run inside on-prem uh, on a computer that, has, uh, that is part of the domain. And so uh, they work together to configure everything. And so uh, I, don't, I don't currently have, I don't think I have an example of, yeah, oh, actually I do. Um, yeah, I mean, once, if you set up your, your um, uh, 802.1x correctly, then you'll notice that you'll get an IP address, you know, from, um, from a AMT. Uh, AMT will, will be able to unlock the network and get an IP address if you're on the uh, network that is 802.1x. So the, the good way to see if the, it works is uh, you, you take a look at that, uh, the, getting the IP address. Now, another last thing I want to show, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to go over here 
And I want to take a look at the radius server. So I'm going to just put this away. Take a look at the radius server. And in the radius server, if you look at the Windows event viewer and look at Windows logs and security, the, this is where it says audit success here. And or sometimes it will say fail if, if it uh, wasn't able to, to uh, connect correctly. But this is where you would be able to see, uh, like in almost real time, you have to hit that five to refresh. But this is where you would see whether your AMT machine was successfully you know, successfully connected to the um, to the network and what how radius uh, you know responded or not to um, to the request. So if you see any failures or if your AMT machine doesn't connect, the first thing you probably want to do is go into the event viewer of the radius server and take a look to see if there's any failures uh, in the Windows log security. And if there are, you can go investigate what's what's wrong. Anyway. Uh, I know this was pretty uh, complicated, lots of machines, lots of stuff, but this is truly a corporate usage of Mesh Central. This is how we get Mesh Central to, um, to work as a corporate server inside large organizations is by having Mesh Central configure Ato to the One X uh, you know, access um, for AMT. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Have a great day.